What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Switch. And today's video is awesome. Imagine Minecraft, but better. Like, I'm not even kidding you guys. It's literally called Better Minecraft. That's the name of the mod pack. Seriously. <laughs> I promise you guys are in for a very good treat today because today I'm playing duos with my boy, Justin. Yes, sir, JK Chua. It's been a long time. But you guys get to witness Justin and I play in an insane modded world. Basically, the mod pack is enhancing the gameplay of Minecraft. And there's just a lot going on, guys. I won't lie to you. It adds new animals to the game different type of villages insane mobs like when i mean insane i mean insanely op mobs like they're so strong different dimensions bosses and just the nature of minecraft itself just changes all in general it is such a fun mod pack but before we end today's video guys i am like 2,000 subscribers away from 200k 200,000 people so i want to thank you guys so much for the journey as of yet but we're shooting for the moon and make sure you smash the like button because i know you guys will enjoy this video but let's get into this better minecraft modded adventure with justin and i sit back guys relax it's about to be beautiful. Hey, Justin. Hey. Dude, look at this world. It's so beautiful. Oh I my know. god. Dude, you actually look so good on my screen because it's shaders. I know, and I just look good in general, right? Well, yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, what is that? What is this? Is this a... Is it wait, tumbleweed? a dead bush is just flying around. Tumbleweed. <laughs> What's this guy? Wait, look at the goblin trader. Hey, goblin? buddy. Just like that, guys, on day one, the friendly banter had already begun. I was so excited to get started on this adventure because... Hold up, guys. Wait. Before we hop into Justin and I's adventure, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Wondershare Filmora Go. Now, this one specifically reaches out to all my future content creators and my current content creators. I've used it for a few projects, and it is specifically for mobile devices. I know many creators who use it for their TikToks and even their YouTube shorts. As you can see here, this is on my lovely phone. It has many features and materials to use so you can make that perfect video. I like all the transition presets. It saves a lot of work when you're on mobile. And there's a music library that is completely royalty free, which means you'll get no copyright strikes. And there are many templates. All you need to do is plug in some content. It may be videos or even photos. And bam, there's my content. I made it in less than 30 seconds. There's me as an axolotl, me skating, and some gear. So use my link in the description to check out Femora Go. And also, they're currently doing a giveaway right now for a gaming chair. I mean, who doesn't want that? Comment what you think of Filmora Go down in the comment section below. Thanks again to Wondershare Filmora Go for sponsoring today's video. Let's hop back into our adventure. If you guys haven't seen the screen yet, the biome and everything around here looks beautiful. I mean, look at this emu. Of course, like every Minecraft journey, I got the woods, got some stone, and I made tools for myself and Justin because this is a dual world, so we might as well help each other out. I also checked out the quest book in our inventory and it looked like there was a lot to do and a lot of objectives to do if we didn't know what to do. For us to get the best experience going into this mod pack, we decided not to do any research. And look at this. Everything just seems so detailed. Just look at this. The sand and the dirt, the way they intersect. I don't know, guys. I just think it was so beautiful. Looked like we spawned in the bottom of a valley. So I went up and I saw all these rams. Of course, I had to kill them because the boys had to eat. And I know I didn't mention this in the beginning in the intro, but there's over 200 mods that we're playing with. So we had no idea what to expect. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want any trouble. Hey there, kangaroos. Hey, buddy. I can't remember what are they like. I mean, look how detailed and cool these kangaroos are. They definitely need to add these in Minecraft. Day two to three, had to kill more sheep. Justin was having problems with his computer, so I made sure when he got back, we had enough food. I mean, of course, I didn't want to experience the world without him, so I waited. Welcome back, Justin. Here. No. Are you sure this is safe? No, but you know. So cute. Oh. Oh. What happens in Las Vegas? <gasps> there's villagers. There's villagers. There's just pillagers. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hello. Oh shoot, what is that? Ooh, ooh, armor, armor. Oh, there's a spawner. <laughs> Wait, it's a dude. Wait, what? It's a skeleton. How is that a skeleton? Ow. Ouch. Ow. Oh, I mean, is anybody else seeing what Justin and I are experiencing? There's like a skeleton with a mask on, and there's just a huge structure. So obviously, the two curious people we were, we had to check it out. <laughs> there's spawners. Oh! oh ho, ho, ho. What? Fireworks. Run, run, Ow. run, 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 run. Oh my oh no, god. I'm at, I'm at four hearts. We had already looted the structure for at least a minute, and we already had a bunch of iron, and the loot was amazing. I mean, obviously, whatever was in there, it was going to be worth exploring. Oh, yeah, there's... Oh, do you see that? It's like a oh, whole fort. Oh, it's a whole outpost of illagers. Dude, they're trying to shoot at me. <laughs> Dude. Dude the one standing over there. How scary is that? You can't make this up, guys. Right beside this huge structure, whatever this thing's called, there was a whole entire illager outpost. We went back to the structure. I took out this mob spawner, and then there was something with two swords coming at me. So I obviously see it's enchanted, so I had to run. I ran to Justin because 
I mean, obviously, you I, you run to your friend, it's too. chasing me. Do something. Nice. We had some problems dealing with it, but we did handle the business. On day four to five, you went to go check out more of, of the structure. I tried to take out this other spawner. It's spooky. I actually was able to get it, and it was firing fireworks at me. And in the chest, there was diamonds and iron. And I got out of there right away. I know we just loaded into this world, and we barely had any time to prepare for the shenanigans, the craziness that the world had in store. We ran into this random village, carnival, I don't even know what this thing is, and this crazy screaming mob that shot fire literally attacked us. Oh! Oh! Shortly after, followed a husk that had armor on it and a mask. Everything was just... Uh, oh, 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 what the hoglin? I mean, my boy Justin said it best. What the hoglin? Like, why is there a husk riding a hoglin in the overworld? There's just so much going on here, guys, and we just couldn't grasp it yet. Better Minecraft, more like scarier Minecraft. What is the hoglin doing here? <laughs> Obviously, the loot was really good in this area, so from day five to six, we try to loot every single chest and barrel in this, I don't even know, hoglin-infested town, village. I don't even know what to call it. We went around trying to destroy every single spawner, but honestly, there were so many hoglins, like, it literally got out of control. Luckily, a lot of them were suffocating in the walls, so we used that to our advantage. The area was super extensive as well. It wasn't like it was, like, a couple of buildings. There were some on top, there were some down in the valley. There were so many, it literally split me and Justin up, so we had to take them from different angles and just play as safe as we could. At one point, there were so many of them, I had to hide in this building here and just try to attack them from the inside. But the range on them was insane. Oh it, this Poglin nearly killed me. He got me down to one and a half hearts, and I didn't want to say goodbye to the world yet. I wasn't ready. We finally were able to get out of that area, and Justin and I reconnected. But then we were trying to fight mobs during the nighttime, and look at this zombie. It's called a lobber zombie. It tried to throw stuff at Justin and me. That next morning, we were traveling through the desert, the savannah, whatever you want to call it, and I walked over a rattlesnake, and it took me down to half a heart. There's already so many close calls, and we're just getting started. We had to keep moving, so as we were adventuring through the world, I looked up. And there was a huge ship plane in the sky. Plane ship, I don't even know. Obviously, we couldn't get up there right away, so we kept moving. But I did mark down the coordinates, so we come back later. We stumbled across this building here. It looked like some type of home. When we went inside, we found a villager. Ooh. See, where? Oh, oh yeah, oh. I, I saw the dungeons in this. Oh, this guy looks cool, dude. The residents of that home, his name was Candidate. I mean, sorry, Candidate, we ended up taking his loop. I mean, that's just what you do when you travel in the Minecraft world. But then there was elephants right outside of his house. Whoa, 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 we mean no harm. Guys, relax. Oh, beefy. And right beside that, there was this really weird structure. What is oh, this one? Oh, God. Over the garden wall. What is, oh, no, what what? is that? What? <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure what this was, and neither did Justin, but it was a warrior with the face of a mushroom. I was so confused. We charged their base. We took out the spawner. I tried to go up the ladder, but I noticed there was some trying to come down, so I backed up, and I wanted to play it really safe. But then all of a sudden, there was three of them. Like, since when can mobs go up and down ladders? Justin was getting bombarded. I had to help him out. Oh, man, the stuff we had already seen. I don't even know if I was ready to take on the rest of the world. <laughs> what the heck? I was able to get up on the upper level to check out the chest. It had some pretty good loot, but then all of a sudden, this mushroom came out of nowhere. Pick in here, please. Ow! Ah! Oh, just some half a heart. Justin and I were being outmatched, so we actually retreated over to Candidate's base. We felt a lot safer there. But then these guys followed us. Guys, we don't want any problems. Stop it. We stop it. Please, we don't want any problems. I've recognized these guys from another mod before, and they are followers of Barako, the sun god. We did retreat and put all of our loot back in the chest, but we did come back, and I took out the spawner, and after that, I felt a lot safer. The loot in the chest were actually really good. That's one thing about this mod pack that surprised me a lot. A lot of the chests everywhere actually had a good amount of loot that was actually worth looting. We ran to the Barracona again, and we took out the group. And when you kill them, they drop some mass sometimes, and it looks pretty good, and they even give you some effects. I can't get over them. I feel like they're just super trolls. Like, I don't know. They're just such a funny mob. Here's Justin and I wearing the mask. I mean, I look pretty good in it. Justin, not too much. We even ran into this village. I don't even know if it's a village. It's more like a campsite for villagers. And they had some chests, some beds. It looked like they had tents set up. And each villager, of course, they all have names. Half of it. We walked over the hill and there was so much more to this encampment. So many more villagers. I don't even know how they were still alive. Of course, we took all the hay bales because we needed some bread. Nice. And I looted every single chest. Yeah, guys, we could not get away from the Barracoas. Wherever we went, they'd follow. But it was a good thing. You know, we collected a lot of their mass, and they give a lot of XP. So when it was time to enchant, I think we'd be really strong. By this village, on top of the hill, there was an Illager Archer Tower. I don't even know how they were so close to the village without the villagers noticing, but they were actually really strong. Some of the arrows made me blind. Some gave you poison. Yeah, me and Justin had a hard time. I even went down to half a heart, and I actually thought I was going to die again. This is like the fifth time I almost died. 
After hiding away a little bit, you know, I'm sure Justin needed some help. So I returned over to the archer tower and the majority of them were dead. I know, I think it was a lot easier if we just were to charge the tower in general, but we played it a little bit slower. Found another one of the villager homes. Justin and I explored in this little home here. It was abandoned, it. no one was here. We kind of wanted to explore, we were very curious. And of course, there was a chest up here and oh. there was some oh. decent loot. There was a librarian hat, that was pretty oh. cool. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 what? Oh, what? Oh! I knew it. It was a trap. Nice oh. hat, dude. You look like a villager. Alright, guys, relax. Yeah, we had killed so many of these things at this point. We had so many masks. So those were gonna come in hand later. Spoilers, but yes, later. Then he ran into these. Then he ran into this mushroom biome here. And as you can see, these are not mushrooms. These are bash rooms. Yeah, these are sheep that have brown mushroom blocks, and the other one that's red polka dots is the red mushroom block. As we were traveling, we actually ran into a battle tower. And we were actually pretty fond of these things. Oh. But we found this. Oh. Oh! Aether dragon oh. egg. Take it, take it, take it. And if you guys don't know what the Aether dragon egg is, it's actually a rideable mob that we can ride later. So basically, if we plant that egg somewhere, it will hatch and it'll become our very own dragon. So that was really huge for us because we'd be flying around soon. When we got to the top of the battle tower, we set our waypoint there. These are waypoint structures here, so you can teleport back and forth. But at night, we saw this structure just across the way from the battle tower. I tried to actually end a pearl over. Didn't work out very well. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, I'm two hearts. I'm two hearts. Oh my god, no, 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 no. That, there's a beast in there. Justin. Oh, no. Oh my god. Eat this. See what health it is right now? If we get close enough, we'll be able to... Oh! Did he just kill himself? Yeah, we're not quite sure what we ran into there, but while I was firing arrows at him, he threw a fireball at one of us, and it actually bounced off the glass, and he killed himself. So I'm not sure if we got lucky, because he was really strong, or he just... Or he was just really weak and stupid. Either way, there was obsidian there. We broke it open and the chest inside the obsidian was actually insane. There was holy water in that, which gave you so many effects. It was... I don't even know what to do with it. It was literally so confusing. At the bottom floor, there was a bunch of illagers there. We cleared all the illagers, and there was a bunch of chests for us to loot there as well. After traveling for so many days, it was time for Justin and I to settle down. So that's exactly what we did. We set up some chests, we put all of our belongings in there, and then we started excavating some land, because it was time for us to make an area that we could call home. Justin, you guys know he's a great builder, so we always leave him for the cracked builds. And me, well, I started building a wall around the base. I wanted to make it look super natural. The look we were going for was like super, you know, like a hole in the wall, like little base in the forest. That was kind of the look we were going for. So I grabbed some leaves, made a wall out of leaves. I crafted some of these beautiful golden lanterns while Justin was kind of figuring out the foundation and kind of what he wanted to do. I did not doubt him whatsoever. You know, I always put my trust in his build, so I let him do his thing. I mean, things were already looking really good as I was making the wall, so I do what I do best. I left him to it, and I went down to the caves. We needed a little bit more of iron, some diamonds. To be honest, we were getting a lot of the resources in the chests that we were looting, and so the cave portion was not really necessary, but I did want to see what type of cave generation and other structures that was going on down below. I even saw this little tortoise here. He looks super cool. He was really big, actually. I was surprised. And then I found this, I don't even know what to call this, some railway, mine shaft, I don't know. But I went down the track, then I found this. It was an area full of cave spiders. There was a spawner back there. I nearly died again. But after I cleared them all, in the chest I found a backpack. And I could fit a double chest worth of inventory in there, so that was insane. Like, oh my goodness. I kept exploring the caves a little bit, and the generation was actually pretty cool. It was not your typical vanilla cave. I know the mod itself does have 1.18 caves and cliff updates so a lot of new stuff different stuff i've never seen before when i got back up to the surface i found another villager camp and this one actually look at the chest all the chest is insane when i got back justin had already built so much it, the foundation was looking great i knew the base was gonna look amazing You want to keep it small, not too big, that way everything was nearby. Plus, we weren't focused on the aesthetic, but more on the adventure. But, I had to do my part as well. Justin did assign me the job to make the flooring within the base, so I thought a good touch would be the leaf carpet, which is a modded block, and also sandstone. So I'd put the sandstone down, and then I'd put the leaf carpet. And then I met my very first friend of the adventure, that wasn't Justin, this horse here. He took a long time to please, but then we became friends. And it was pretty fast, actually. 
Alrighty. Led. The horse and I traveled for a little bit and we found another village. Ba, 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 ba. What's doing here? Oh, this is an illager. Wait, what? What are you guys doing here? Yo, I'm floating! Oh no. Oh god, where am I? This is no good. Yeah, I don't know what it is about this mod pack, but it places illagers right beside villages, and that's just cruel. The villagers are gonna die at any moment. I started clearing out the flooring because it was my turn to do a little bit of building, but around the base, it was still very dangerous. Obviously, we had the walls to protect us, but outside those walls, it was not very safe. Like, look at the skeleton. It has... I don't even know what that is. Enchanted armor, a leather helmet, like... These things are basically stronger than us. I want to show Justin a little bit of adventure, but he also wanted to show me something that he saw. He was taking me over to Baraco. Uh. But we're not but we actually weren't there oh, to fight Baraco. We just oh, wanted to get the acacia that. trees that were nearby. We needed more wood no, to build some stuff. Oh! Look at it. Run! But Baraco, trust me when I say this, I'll be back later. We got all the wood we needed, and it was time to finish up the base. At least my part of it. While we were chopping down trees, I got a lot of things in my inventory called mysterious eggs. So I looked into it a bit and I made myself an egg analyzer. And what that does, it actually reveals the egg to you. And Ready? then you can actually hatch different oh. type of birds. Hey buddy. Oh my God, he's so cute. Then I hatched myself a magpie. And these birds that were coming out were so tiny and cute. I mean, look at this little robin. <gasps> these, these birds are tiny. Oh. <laughs> This was from the exotic birds mod pack. But we had to get back to work. I finished up the flooring, but then Justin had a bunch of eggs as well. I finished up the touches to the floor, and then now it was time to reveal some more eggs. Toucan egg. Ready, set, boom. Dude, he's sick. It looks like. Oh, hey, oh, gall. Is this like a seagull? It's not. Ostrich. Hey! While we were hatching all these eggs, I literally told myself, wait, you have a dragon egg. What are you doing, Switch? So I placed it down here, I right clicked it, and I started the hatching process. Hatch I did a little bit of research, especially with the Aether Dragon Egg. I need to be above a certain Y level, so that's exactly what I did. I went on top of the Battle Tower, I stacked up, and then I began the hatching process for our Aether Dragon Egg. I was really high up, and I was really excited to meet this dragon, but I know I had to wait a few Minecraft days for it to hatch, so I had to return back to the base and leave him up here by himself. Or her, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet. When I got back to the base, the birds were looking big already. They were maturing, they were no longer baby birds. And you guys are probably asking, why don't you have them caged up? Well guys, this is me and Justin's sanctuary. We don't want to lock anything up. They can come and go as they please. I even started making a chest area, because you guys know I love my chest areas. I trolled Justin a bit, but then it was okay guys. He had his bow pulled out, so I hid behind an ostrich, so he couldn't shoot me. Next level tactics guys, I know. I continued to troll Justin, because you know, that's just what I do. But I also transferred all of our stuff from the main area into our chest area. And Justin made these comfy little seats here. And it looked really cool when we sat in them. And then it was his oh, turn to yeah. hatch some eggs. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. Dude. Whoa. Dude. There was four in there. <laughs> There's four in one egg. Congrats on the four the birth of your four children, Justin. <laughs> Quadruplets. Dude. Okay, I got a roadrunner. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep. Oh, yeah. I was really enjoying all the birds in this mod pack and just watching them grow up. And actually, a lot of them left. So I wasn't mad about that at all. They grew their wings and they were ready to leave the nest. And so our base was coming together. Justin had put some decorations around. The main hub area looked really good. The roof is actually made out of campfires. Really good design. Then in the morning of day 34, I went to go check out the Aether Dragon. And he was hatched. Look at him. Or her. I don't know. Look at the dragon. It's so cute, and I can't wait for it to become a full-sized dragon. Because once that happens, we'll be able to ride it. But before any of that could happen, Justin and I had to do some fishing, because the dragons love to eat fish, and that's how we tame them. There was aquaculture in this mod pack as well, and we love getting Neptune's bounty, so we always shoot to get that bounty. The birds were roaming around, distracting us, but then we also wanted to make an enchantment station, because we wanted to enchant those rods to get some better luck, and get more fish for our dragons. In the mod pack, enchanting looked really, really cool. You can see the lapis lazuli floating around. But Justin and I, we wasted a lot of time in that little pond that we made in our base. Because there was no fish in there. So we went out to the ocean, an entry, a lake. And we got a lot better luck out there. A lot more fish. And I also pulled the Neptune's bounty out there. Sounds serious. <gasps> I've done it. Yo. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh. Nice. The rod was actually really good. We pulled a lot of bows that had enchantments on it. So I was able to make an insane bow. On day 38, I actually found the deeper dark. I was quite terrified. 
That was one of the quests in our quest book, and then I found this. Oh my god. Run. Oh my god, Justin, I'm looking at a warden right now. <gasps> he's levitating. Do a, do a leap with the baby. Oh, he's, he's going crazy. Damn, he's cracked. I'm firing arrows at him. I'm firing away. I don't know how much health he has, though. He's so cracked. <gasps> my god! Is it ever one more? Oh! No! Get him! Oh, oh, we got him! What did he drop? Yeah. Wow, he had so much stuff. It made sense that if we went down to the deeper dark that we'd find the warden, but I was terrified. I didn't even want to risk taking one hit to him. Then his sulk zombies came and attacked me down here as well. Something about the deeper dark made diamonds spawn a lot more, so we spent a good amount of time there collecting diamonds and just random stuff down here for decorations. When I got back on day 41, I was finally able to craft a full set of diamond armor and make myself an iron shield. I went to go visit the aether dragon and it was ready, and it was getting a lot bigger in size. It looked like it was an adolescent size, but it wasn't quite ready to fly with us on its back yet. But I did break the floor below it to see if it could fly, and luckily it did flap its wings and did not fall to its death. On the way down to go see the Aether Dragon, the Phantom started spawning in, and I nearly died. It almost knocked me off. On the bottom of the battle tower, there was a bunch of mobs, so we had to be careful. But the dragon wasn't 100% ready yet. I told you guys we'd be back for Barocco, and that's exactly what we did. I took my horse, Justin and I, and we faced Barocco. <gasps> Justin, watch out! Oh my god, what's the game plan? What's the game plan? Are we just going in? Barocco was mad for some reason. He was firing beams in from the sky. It looked like lightning. I hit him with an arrow, and all of his minions started coming to attack us. Well, I guess they're his servants. I don't know what they're called. Die. Die. Oh, I got him. He's going crazy. I can't even get close to him. Ouch. I'm firing my bow. He's getting crazy. Oh! Yeah. Oh my god. Did he drop anything? A Barocco. Barocco got my follower. Yep. Oh, then I can pick him back up. Watch this. Ready? Oh. Hey. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the team, bro. Come on, ready? Wait, is this? Oh my god, look at all my minions! Okay. As you guys can see, with Barocco's head mask on, I could control his little minions. And it was a good thing we collected so many masks, because I could get an army of them to attack for me. But, the Aether Dragon was now ready to fly. I gave it some fish and a saddle, and we were flying. We were off. I couldn't believe it. I was literally flying a dragon. I don't know what it is. Something about modded Minecraft and dragons just... It's just awesome. While I was flying the dragon, I wasn't quite used to it. I hit shift, and I actually hit the ground and died. Luckily, I had a totem of undying. Because if I didn't, I would have said goodbye to that world. Justin tried to ride my Aether Dragon. By the way, guys, what should we name this dragon? Let me know down in the comment section below. But we did want to go check out the Illager outpost that we had seen. This one had a huge wall around it. So I did get some aerial shots in before we hopped in. But then I said, screw it. We hopped right down into the compound. And these Illagers are so strong. Not only are they really strong, but there were so many of them. One dropped this axe that did a lot of damage, and then we found this redstone contraption. Wasn't quite sure what it did, so I flicked the switch, then I hit a button, and then it started dispensing fireworks. Literally so random. I don't know. I don't know if it was a good idea though, because it brought attention to a lot of other Illagers. There were so many around us, I was swarmed by them. I had to build up. Luckily, I built fast enough so I could hide, but Justin did not. I placed down a lava bucket so it could burn the illagers, but luckily, they couldn't get up here and hurt me. Poor Justin was running around, though. He was not able to build up and was just being chased by, like, every single illager on the compound. I tried to lay down some support fire, but it wasn't enough. One of them hit me into my own lava, and that was really scary. But don't worry, guys. I made it out safe. I decided to leave my little hole there and actually go into the ground. And I totally forgot. I had all these masks here. I had a bunch of troops that I could use. So I threw them all out there, and they started attacking the zombies. Unfortunately, they did not last very long. <laughs> they spawned. And then I seeked refuge in this little hut here. And this hut had so many chests, and the loot in it was so good. Justin shortly joined me, but then he got snuck up on by another illager. Oh, oh, Jason. Oh, 
Don't worry, guys. I came to his rescue. We finished looting the rest of this tower here. We got what we needed, and we went back home. As no way. When we got back home, Justin and I, we wanted to explore the nether. And if Ooh. you guys know me, I don't like going to the nether a lot because it's just a scary place to be. And as soon as I walk in the nether, it was scary. There was quicksand. Literally, if you stood on it, it would fall. Oh, that's... Oh, my God. That's quicksand. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I'm eating this. I'm eating this. I don't care. What? Not only was another dangerous place to be, it doesn't help that this sand is making me fall for no reason. We found ourselves a bastion here. There's no twist to the bastion here, but there was a lot of piglins. Um, I don't know if this is the typical amount of piglins, but me and Justin accidentally hit the zombie piglins, so that didn't really help either. But I did have a god apple eaten, so I just jumped down. I jumped right into the lava. I knew it wasn't going to take any damage. And I took all the loot. And look at this chest. A netherite ingot, an ancient debris. Oh my god, it was too lit. We collected all the gold and we got out of there. Yeah, I don't always feel very safe in Bastion, so I thought that was a great idea. It was really cool to see the other biomes in the nether. This mod actually had a bunch of biomes. Not just like one or two, but everywhere you walked it was something new. This one here was really dark and eerie. Some others were really bright with mushrooms. And then, you know, Justin said this one looked like the Shrek biome. Bro, I don't even- Shrek biome? Shrek biome. <laughs> nether Shrek? And then I saw this nether frog. I've seen this frog before, and it's dangerous. So I just made sure he was out of the way, because I did not want to fall into the lava. While we were traveling here, I saw this bone-like structure in the lava. Huh? What? Ah! Oh. Oh! Dude! I see it. It's like a... I see its bones. Oh. Distance. Oh! oh! Wait, Jason, he was literally... Oh! Oh, no. I'm no. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh my god, I can eat this. Let me try to hit him. Okay, I ate one. Oh, oh I got him! Oh. In there! Luckily, there was a lot of things that we could eat that gave us fire protection, and we did have god apples, so it made traveling a lot easier and gave me a peace of mind. And then we found, like, it almost looked like a jungle in the nether, which where we found a nether fortress. Awesome. Does not sound awesome. Oh, this chest, though. Ooh. And of course, guys, there was some blazes there, so I farmed those for some blaze rods. I found a bomb in this chest. So when I saw Justin, I had to use it Ooh. on him, and he said it actually did a lot of damage. And he found, like, what looked like a sand temple in the nether, so like a nether temple. Oh, there's a- it's a dungeon. What? Oh! What okay, kind of, what kind uh, is we, it? Don't, we don't I need magma cubes. cubes. <gasps> Another aether dragon! Ooh! No, no, no dragon. Let's not, oh, uh, that, that's definitely a bait. Look, look, look at the ch Wow, it looks different. Wait, 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 there's- the Oh my god. Oh! That's literally stronger than my diamond sword. Oh, whoa! That's a, oh go? my god, there's a super blaze. Oh my god, Justin. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> it looks angry. Get him. Here's a helmet on. That's King oh my Blaze. It's like... literally a King Blaze. It's called Wildfire. Oh my god, hot headed. Oh, <laughs> wait, that's sick. Yeah, so some random blaze spa spawned and it dropped me a really cool helmet. But when we got back on the surface on day 56, we wanted to see more of the world. We could have came back to our original area, but then we found these gorillas. You see that? Oh, uh, what? Is that a Venus flytrap or something? Oh, hold on, I'm approaching you. Oh, it's not friendly. Ow, it hurts. Ow. Oh my ow. god. I, oh my god, it hurts so much. Oh, I just shot it in the head. Ow, ow. Dude, they're super strong. Ow. Dude, they hurt. Oh, there's more. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, Jason! Oh. Jason! Jason! Bro, was that Shrek? <laughs> Summoned it. Yeah, oh my a... god, I just shot him! Whoa. With it. <laughs> let's go in, let's go in. Top of the morning, top of the morning. Top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. Be careful. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure where that mob came from. That It kind of looked like a boss, but maybe the witch summoned it. But uh, Justin found a witch hat in there, and there was even monkeys right outside our hut. And these adorable little ducks, man. Oh my god, they're so cute. While on our travels, we found ourselves a pirate ship. Yeah, it looked really cool, actually. So, of course, we have to go loot it. There was pillagers on it. And they had special arrows that actually hurt and slowed you down. They had all types of special effects. Of course, the loot had to be getting it, so that's why we raided this pirate. We are the number one pirates, so we actually grabbed some flint and steel, and we lit that thing up, because Justin and I, we were the number one pirates. And then we, uh, we boated off and watched it burn away. Damn, we're, we're terrible people, man, seriously. We ran into this village here off the coast, and in one of the chests in the village, I actually found a map. And I wanted to see what the treasure would look like in this mod pack, but it uh, was kind of embarrassing. It took us all day to find this chest. We literally tore up this whole area, and then we eventually found it. Map. It was all worth it, though, because we got this. 
Where? Oh! Dude. Yeah, a water dragon egg. So now Justin can get a different egg from me. We spent the rest of that night fishing because Justin just loves fishing. And he had to feed that dragon when it was ready to come out. We saw this really weird structure that looked like an entrance to an underground cave area. And we were right, actually. As we were looting this area, I wasn't quite sure exactly who or what it was for at first. But then I found out right away it was for villagers. It looks like the villagers went down here underground to make sure they were safe from everything in the overworld. Because... Honestly, I don't blame them. Everything out here is crazy. I found myself another pirate ship. Justin wasn't around, so I thought, you know, if I'm taking this by myself, I should just blow up the bottom half and try to kill as many as I can. It was pretty close, actually. It got me down to three and a half hearts. But the loot wasn't an insane, but we still had to establish our dominance as the pirates. So, of course, I lit it up and put TNT on it. It accidentally caught on fire from one of the flint and steels, so I aborted ship as soon as possible. And then we actually ran into another one of these entrances from above ground. This was in a desert area, and it actually turned out to be like a catacomb. All that spawned down here was zombies. It was super dark in here. I know if you guys can't see this, just imagine my experience. But there were so many tunnels, entrances. It was a maze. Like, I got lost. I lost Justin a few times. It even connected to this huge cave. I don't know if the design was intentional, but it looked insane. I accidentally aggroed this enderman, and this happened. Oh my god, I got knocked off. Ah... Oh, are you okay? Oh my god. I fell down. Oh my god, you're... Ah! Uh -huh. I'm good, I'm good. Oh my god. Justin! Justin! Oh! <laughs> Yo! Oh What's my up gosh. Then? What's up then, bro? I know, I know. Your boy Switch handled it like a boss. Not really. I actually entered like full panic mode and I like started spamming flint and steel, which actually ended up working. While I was down there, I took advantage of just being down in the cave and I collected some diamonds. We went back up to the surface and then we checked out this village here and there was a waystone here. So that took us directly home. And once we got back home, we had that water dragon egg. So Justin planted it right on the base. TV's uh, on the way, baby. baby. <laughs> oh, and then it was time for more adventure. On the morning of day 72, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. We, all we knew was it was just a huge castle-like structure and the achievement said, enter Sandman. We climbed up the side of the wall and we were accompanied with cave spiders and they were really strong. There were spawners all over this floor. Justin told me initially, as soon as we entered, that he was about to die, and I felt that. I was being chased by cave spiders and these random husks with weapons and armor on. Luckily, I did have a god apple. We had no idea what we were walking into, so we did regroup and try to take it from another angle. I mean, look at this husk here. It has netherite armor on, an enchanted hoe, and not to add chainmail leggings and netherite boots. Just look how long it took for me and Justin to kill it. We came back in, we destroyed this spawner, and I saw this water source, which shot me straight up to the top of this thing. Looked like some type of oasis. Uh, the barrel actually had insane loot, and this chest actually had really good splash potions. Yeah, Next thing you know, I was looking at a cow carry around a husk with a bow. Like, what is happening, guys? Is anybody else seeing this? Hey. I was so confused. While I was being confused, I didn't even get time to just recuperate because I was getting destroyed by just random mobs everywhere. <laughs> so weird. Ah. There was a lot of mobs coming out of this specific corridor here, so Justin and I had to check it out. I was greeted by a wither skeleton with diamond armor on, some type of mask, and an enchanted bow. Look at this thing. It is an absolute beast. But of course, we had to go see what was going on. And then we saw a bunch of emerald blocks and diamond blocks there. But first, we had to deal with the mobs. I went through the side here, destroyed the spawner, and I looked into one of the chests. I was like, oh my god. So what we had to do, we had to kill every single mob first. I literally was looting the chest while Justin was defending me. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> but I was just way too excited from the loot. <gasps> but just look at this, guys. A lot of diamonds, pickaxes, weapons, like, oh my There's goodness, insane. It was definitely worth all the pain that we were going through. Oh my. Oh my god, these chests are even better. I just looked into one. Oh my god. Do I just these chests are even work? better. Oh my. We have to get those spawners up there. Do I have... Oh my god, this one's difficult. Oh my god. Going for it. Going for it. No, it knocked me off. Dude. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, we were just getting destroyed by mobs left and right, but it was definitely worth it. Like, did you guys see that chest? There's two pairs of netherite boots and 12 diamonds in it. We were getting absolutely destroyed, so we actually need to get these hay bales so we can make a bunch of bread. And after chat, that, wait. we were chilling. 
A blue bomb? Question mark? If you guys are watching what's going on in these chests, you can tell we're just getting insanely OP. There's a bunch of dragon eggs. None of them will spawn anymore, though. So. And armor. Not just regular armor, enchanted armor. Those are kind of cracked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I must say it was very dangerous in here, but it was 100% worth it. We went down this corridor here because we want to check out the whole entire building, mansion. I don't even know what you want to call it, but uh, this was a busy corridor. There was mobs coming in from the top and there was mobs running straight at us. And there was another mob just firing straight fireworks at us. Like, I was so confused. I didn't even know what was going on. I remember trying to clear this with Justin. I didn't even say a single word. I was just so focused on like dealing with the mobs. I didn't want to die while Justin was just like reacting and being like, this is so oh, crazy. Oh, oh, you're right. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> How many? How many? Oh, oh four? Just a nice little debris core. Oh, eight, I think. Maybe. Oh. Eight, nice. Yeah, Justin had a theory that there was going to be something inside that obsidian core. And luckily, I did mine that. And you can see my pickaxe has vein mine. So anything that I mine that's similar to that block, it just all gets destroyed. Oh but because we went from the roof down into the building, we didn't get to see the whole entire thing. But we did get the best loot because we started from the top. We did go through like every floor, but I had enough at that point. I was getting destroyed by all the mobs. And so I just made a run for it. And I wanted to just be back home. <gasps> my guy. So hey. Justin finally got to say hello to his water dragon, and I also planted two of the aether dragons because we had so many eggs. And of course, I had to make some netherite armor because we got so much of it from the nether and from that structure. Oh. I started to collect ender pearls while Justin tried to start feeding his dragon so he could ride it around. So he just spent some time fishing and just hanging out with his dragon. On the night of day 82, Justin's dragon was now a full-grown adult, and so I introduced him to my dragon, which we still have to name, don't forget about that. And we went on a little stroll, we flew up into the sky, it felt awesome. We also just checked out the two Aether dragons on top. On day 88 to 94, I wanted to do some more solo adventuring. I feel like I hadn't flown around on my dragon yet and just seen the modern world for myself. So me and Justin did some separate things here. I wanted to see what the world had else to offer. So here are a few things. First of all, I found that random illager outpost and then this mushroom kingdom. It was a really humble abode, but uh, it was not my thing. So I left as soon as I could. I even found an illager tower and luckily I had a dragon so I could just fly straight to the top and I killed the illager king. And then after I finished him off, I dropped down and I took out each level. And this is actually when I found out my dragon can actually defend me, like as an actual companion. As I was flying around the world, I found this airship here and it was a really big airship. I could already tell the mobs in here were really strong. I went to this main corridor and there was way too many mobs for me to be comfortable with. So of course I did what me and Justin do best. We just burnt it. They're all gonna fall down. If there's no structure there, they're all just gonna fall and I was gonna be the wiser. <laughs> On day 95, when I got back to the base, Justin and I prepared to go fight the Ender Dragon. We got everything we needed, and then we flew off. We saw the structure and went down deeper, and it was actually a spider cave. There was cobwebs everywhere. I don't like spiders. You know, the poisonous ones, they can hit you, and they get you down to half a heart. I just not feel good there. I tried to break it. I think it's the spawn in the middle. After we left, when we were flying through the sky towards the stronghold, there was this dragon that was following mine and Justin's dragon. I don't know what it was. I hit it with an arrow. It was on fire and I finished it off with my sword. After I killed it, there was more than one. It was chasing Justin's oh God, dragon. Justin. I don't even know where they came from, but I was not going to let them kill Justin or my dragon. We found ourselves in a pirate ship, actually, and it was full of skeletons. And of course, before I even got down there, Justin had already set it on fire. Across the way, there was another pirate ship boat, but it was filled with illagers this time. I flew in from the top and I provided cover fire with my bow. I looked across and the other boat was, uh, it was extremely on fire. While following my eyes of Ender, it actually led me down here. And this is where we found this creature, the oh. Ferris Rotnot. This is a boss I've always wanted to fight. We charged right in there and Justin's dragon followed him. This poor dragon, I don't know why he even decided that was a good idea. We were swinging at it, but we couldn't get any damage in on it. But then we found out the trick. I remember, to take this thing out, you actually have to make it swing on the ground. Then once the axe is on the ground, you can swing it from the back. So this was perfect with a duo. I can't get through. Oh my god. I was distracting the Rotten Knot, and whenever he'd swing on me, Justin would hit him in the back. Like go, 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 go. He's knocking me up. He's hitting me. But Ow. we were going to kill him. Come on, man. Every swing Flat. was doing a lot of damage. 
Oh, there we go. Finish him. Boom. Nice. What did you get, bro? Oh, oh look at the sword in his back. Oh. <laughs> like, the axe. Dude. Never breaks right click to attack. Either. I'm going to try this. Uh oh, Boom. I'm going to die. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the Rot Knot dropped a super cool axe and a helmet that would never break. These were super cool tools that we could use for later on, especially on the Ender Dragon. We located the stronghold. Unfortunately, Justin's dragon didn't make it out of there and didn't make it to the stronghold. And when we made it into the stronghold, my dragon died in the stronghold as well. But it didn't take too long till we found the portal room. It looked insane. It was way much better than the typical vanilla stronghold. It was epic. It's awesome. Oh, wow. yeah. This looks awesome. We filled in the portal one by one. Next thing you know, on day 99, we were in the end. Oh, oh dude. What? Whoa. Oh. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Boom. The end it looked so cool. The sky looked totally different. There was grass in the end, and the structures looked completely different. The boys were off to a hot start. I was landing the majority of my arrow shots on the healing towers. So was Justin. This ender dragon was going to die so quick. Not only did we have the equipment we've been gathering this whole entire 100 day journey, but we were feeling really good after killing the fairest rot knot. The ender dragon had no source of healing, so whenever she purged, she takes so much damage. I wonder if we can get an ender dragon egg, like, so we can grow our own ender dragon. I'm not sure if there's a mod in here or if this ender dragon is super special, but me and Justin felt like the movement from this ender dragon was very different from the typical vanilla ender dragon. She would dive this way, go that way. It was very different from the vanilla one. The ender dragon purged one last time and it was our time to shine. Well wow, then, I'll save the last hit for you. Come on, she's waiting for you. Justin, hit her with the bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Come on. Bow, hit her bow, with the bow, bow, bow. See ya. Go boys! Justin won the final hit on the Ender Dragon, so of course, as a good duo, I let him get the final hit. We collected the Ender Dragon egg, and it actually turned into the Dragon Mount mod, so we could actually grow our very own Ender Dragon. So we put it on top of our base, and now the growing process began. Justin kept yanking it around. <laughs> Alright, you're, you're bullying it? making scrambled eggs <laughs> but there we go guys we had our very own ender dragon we're not sure what to call it what should we call this ender dragon let us know down in the comment section below if we do a 200 days i'm really excited to show you guys what that looks like but that's it on day 100 justin brought his best fit i brought my best fit and we just wanted to show what better minecraft clothes you could put on and i thought we looked pretty good but this is the end of the video i really hope you guys enjoyed if you did, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. This has been your boy Switch and my homie Justin. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.